guest this evening has appeared in numerous films, including Pulp Fiction, Rosewood, and Mission Impossible. This Saturday, you can see him in the critically acclaimed HBO movie, Don King, Only in America. Let's take a look. FBI, IIS, PBS, mobsters, Muslims, judges, and jurors, baby. I took them all along. Got housed with Harvard Law degrees on my trail, and you still can't track me. You know why? Because I'm the American dream. Because America is my country. My people built this mother and I know my way around. Please welcome Ving Rain. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, uh, they sent me, I didn't get to see the whole thing. They sent me a bunch of long scenes from the movie, and I was watching it. This thing looks amazing. It looks fantastic. And you really have Don King down. We have a cartoon Don King, but you really sell the real Don King. Well, I interviewed 45 different people, including Don King, mm -hmm. George Foreman, mm -hmm. Teddy Atlas, and... Uh, he was very helpful. The cast was great. The director did a great job. And you, so. you, you hung out with Don King. What did, did you see anything around his house or anything that gave you an insight into the guy? Yeah, the most interesting thing that I think I saw was he had a stack of Shakespeare's cliff notes. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's what I kind of found. I was like, wow. And then... Um, that is so weird because he is always spouting off yes, these always great quotes. Yes, and he's I'm always, so disillusioned now. I thought he read the whole book. No, he's, he's always <laughs> misquoting Shakespeare also. So. so he has the cliff notes. He's cheating. Amen. And uh, you, listen, you listen to audio tapes also of, uh, of, of the real Don King for hours and hours and hours. Isn't that yeah, right? As a matter of fact, um, I studied with a voice teacher named Denise Woods at the Juilliard School, which is where mm -hmm. I graduated from. And I have three Rottweilers. And what I would do is I'd put on the audio tapes for maybe, I'd walk my dogs for about two hours a day. I knew I metamorphosized into the character when my three Rottweilers started growling at me. You know, I started talking like this, baby. Only in America, baby. Oh, my lucky leprechaun, baby. Oh, you're big now, baby. You're big. Don't let me get disputatious here now. So I was doing they that. They started growling. Yes, they sensed they did. the presence yes, of evil, they did. I guess. So I was, yeah. yeah. So I went through my oh. spiritual catharsis and... Uh, uh, he is, I mean, he is this uh, very, I mean, very complex character, yes. but the times, he really is like that. I, I met him in a restaurant, or he'd been on the show once, and then later on, I'm sitting in a restaurant. It's a nice restaurant, and all of a sudden, I just hear this voice from across the room. There's my little leprechaun! Yes. And it's Don King. Yes. <laughs> Runs over, picks me up, gives me a big squeeze. He is that guy. He's yes. larger than life. But you know, it really shocked me. I interviewed an FBI agent by the name of Joe Spinelli, mm -hmm. who was on the trail of boxing and Don King for four and a half years. Mm -hmm. He said, in the sport of boxing, Don King has not broken the law. So for myself as an artist, um, before then, 99.9% .9 of everything that I read was negative about Don. Mm -hmm. But as an artist, I had to get myself to a neutral point, and I literally had to... Uh, wash my brain of all preconceived notions and mm -hmm. build the character from scratch. Well, so just in boxing, he hasn't broken the law, but outside of boxing, he's probably done all no, kinds he of has, stuff. Well, it was interesting because um, what I found, and I grew up on 126th Street in Harlem, mm -hmm. and there's certain code of ethics and morals in that environment, mm -hmm. and there's mainstream America's code of ethics and morals. Mm -hmm. um, I think many times people have used mainstream America's codes of ethics and morals to make judgments upon right. that subculture of you know, black street crime life in his earlier days, or in the sport of boxing. But how do you explain his hair? I mean, obviously, <laughs> I don't care what kind of situation he grew up in, there's no excuse for that hair. Well, I, I think... I, I'm willing to forgive a lot and, and accept that I don't understand, but do you, do you have any insight into you, what you, he's doing? Is it mayonnaise? Is it, uh, some kind well, of, is it a conditioner? Is he, is he blowing, drying it upside down? Well, we deal with that in the film, and I think we have a clip that will uh, answer that question. Does it involve electricity? No comment. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a clip where, I guess this clip describes that this is when Don King was at a press conference. It's, it's a real scene, and someone asked him about his hair. Let's take a look. As you well know, my hair was all nappy and kinky and curly, just like any other black man. But a couple of nights ago, I asked God to show me a sign that I was on a true and righteous path. Then I went to bed with my wife, Henry, and before you know it, my head started rumbling and moving. 
and, and, and popping up. I mean, each curl was ping, ping, ping. It was straightening up, reaching out towards heaven. And it's been that way ever since. I assure you, I don't use any hair products or conditioner. No, it's all natural. Well, I might go for the questions then. Uh, before we go, I want to ask one question about your, your character in Pulp Fiction, Marcellus Wallace. Uh, it's such a, such a popular movie worldwide, globally. I was curious how people respond to you when you just walk down the street. What kind of reactions do you get? In general, very positive. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I were in London, and uh, I think it's called Piccadilly Circus, mm -hmm. and there were a group of uh, skinheads. that They were about a block away, and they started yelling things at my wife and I. So we started walking quickly. They started running towards us. We ran, and then we stopped, and we found out that they were saying, in part in my language, but, Marcellus Wallace, you're a bad mother blank. So, um, I mean, I really... Mother find, blank. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I really I'm found, confused. <laughs> character became sort of a, uh -huh. a, a, a cult hero and is well-received around the world. Yeah. Oh, it's a, a great role to get. And also, uh, I loved... I read the book, Rosewood, and so I love the, uh, the depiction, too. Uh, yeah. That's it's great. Probably my proudest piece of, of work that yeah, I Yeah, so it's a far. great piece of work. Yeah. And uh, i got to mention this, because it looks great. Don King, Only in America, is this Saturday at 8 o'clock p.m. on HBO. Check it out. I hope you uh, come back and, and visit us again. Very cool to meet you. Hey, thank you. Cool Bing audience. Rames, everybody. Peter Gallagher coming up. we got a lot of shows, so stick around. Gotta be made